Hello everyone, welcome to this month's edition of Webinar Wednesday. My name is Jaylena Polito. I will be moderating today's session. Today we have Jerwin Begonia, our Relationship Manager out in Ontario, to talk to you about SAP Business One alerts and approval procedures. So we'll leave some time for Q&A at the end of the session, but you can feel free to submit your questions using the questions panel on the right side of your screen at any point throughout the session. Jerwin, I'll pass it over to you. Okay, thanks very much, Jaylene, and welcome everyone again to another edition of Wednesday Webinar. So today's session is on approval procedures and alerts. So, you know, this is something that's been around forever, since day one, and uh, I'll be demoing this in 9.2, patch level eight, the most uh, recent version of SAP Business One. But like I said, these are features that have been around forever. But a lot of customers still ask me for a little bit of a refresher on how to set these up, how to use them, and today I'm just going to go through some, some features on setting up approval procedures, alerts. I'm going to go through some of the ones that are system defined that come right out of the box. And we're also going to look at how we can build our own approval procedures and alerts. Okay. And some of the main benefits behind this is that it actually helps us to eliminate errors uh, and it can increase customer satisfaction because having um, an approval procedure is basically a second pair of eyes. Think of it as document validation. So for example, if there's an illegal discount on a document, it can be sent to our manager for approval. And that helps us to eliminate errors. We can uh, decrease our customer returns and credit notes to customers and ultimately increase customer satisfaction. Also, what's an alert? Well, it basically notifies someone about something. And again, there's system-defined alerts, and there's also user-defined alerts that we can create on our own, and we can actually schedule these. And again, it's just better visibility into our key data so that we can make quicker and smarter decisions. So the agenda today is we're going to take a look at some of the prerequisites we need to do in SAP Business One to set up these alerts and approval procedures. We're going to look at what comes out of the box. and we're going to look at creating some of our own, and then, like Jaylene said, we're going to end it off with some Q&A. So let's get right into the demo. All right. Okay. So what you're looking at, like I said, this is the latest and greatest version of SAP Business One. So there are some prerequisites to consider. So the first thing you want to do is go into administration, go into system initialization, and go into general settings. And all we're gonna do under the services tab is we're gonna check a couple of boxes here. So what we wanna do is this box here that says display inbox when new message arrives. Okay, we wanna make sure that's checked. Um, there's also some other alert boxes that we can check as well. But we also wanna update messages, in my case, every minute. Now, you can change that to every five minutes, every 30 minutes, whatever your preference is. But for today's demo, we're going to update uh, messages every, every minute. Okay. Now, if some of you are running the HANA version uh, of SAP Business One, there is another prerequisite. So under the software landscape design, uh, make sure that you have that you go under alert settings under the job service configuration and you make sure that this alert service is running. Okay. So with that being said, let's take a look at my message alert inbox. Now, as you can see in my inbox, and if in case you're wondering how do I show this inbox, you can actually go into windows and you can show messages and alerts overview. And you can see in my inbox, I've got some alerts and some maybe some approval procedures that are awaiting. Um, for example, this one here that's highlighted, it's renew contract. So this is a system defined alert that's reminding me that this particular customer has a contract renewal. It's actually already uh, ended, his, his existing contract ended on April 3rd, 2007. So the nice benefit behind this is that this is an upsell opportunity for me. It's an opportunity for me to contact this customer 
and upsell them on a contract renewal. So this is an example of the system generating an alert automatically to remind me of something, okay? That's a system alert. And we also have some um, user-defined alerts as well. And we're gonna get into that in a little bit. But let's start things off with approval procedures. Okay, so we'll just minimize this. So if we go into our administration and we go into the approval procedure and then approval stages, this is the first step to creating an approval. First, we need to define who our authorizer is. So let's say, for example, we have a scenario. We want to alert the, alert the sales manager if a user creates a quotation with a discount of 20% or higher, right? So in this case, I actually have one predefined here. I'm gonna do a search here. And I have one called illegal discount. So I give it a stage name, it's called illegal discount. I give it a detailed description so where the discount is greater than 20%. And I have the option of making uh, one approver or multiple approvers. In this case, I only want the sales manager approve, uh, to approve the, the quotation, but I could have the CFO uh, be, a, be an approver as well. Similarly, I could also have one or more uh, people to reject this document. In this case, I'm only gonna have one person that can approve or reject the sales quotation if there's a 20% discount or more. In this case, it's my manager. The second step is to create the approval template. So I have one that's defined, predefined here, called a legal discount, gave it the same name. Now, all we're doing here under the originator tab is we're specifying which users need approval. So for example, I have three users here, and if any of these three users create a quote, 20% or more, it's gonna go to the sales manager for approval. I also have a couple of check boxes up here. I wanna make this active because I want it to be in effect straight away. I can also have this active when a user is either adding a new document or updating an existing document. Under the documents tab, this is where I actually define which documents are subject to this approval. In this case, I only want the sales quotation, but basically any document in the system can be subject to an approval. The stage tab is where I relate this stage that we just created, which is, in other words, the manager is the approver. We're, we're relating this manager to this template. We're saying this manager can approve or reject these quotations that have a discount of 20% or higher. Now, under the terms tab, we have some system defined um, approvals that are already set up here. So let me just actually show my screen, look at my columns here. So as you can see, the system comes with some predefined terms here. In this case, we have a predefined term where it's gonna look at the discount percentage on the header of the document, and we can specify a rule here, or a ratio, that says whenever it's greater than, and I give it a value, in this, in this case, greater than 20%. There's also some other terms here, so we can also look at if there's you know, a quotation or a document where the deviation from the credit limit is greater than or equal to, let's say, 25%, right? Um, or uh, we have a deviation from commitment. So we've got a customer has more deliveries that are committed in the system, we can define a value behind that and we can send that for approval. Also gross profit percentage. If there is a document where you know, the gross profit percentage is less than uh, a certain value, a certain percent, we can have that sent to approval as well. There's also deviation from budget, budget, and also, of course, a total document um, approval procedure too. So if the total document is, let's say, greater than or equal to uh, $50,000, 
it goes to an approval procedure as well. So in this case, we're only concerned about this row here. So just to recap, if there's a discount that's greater than or equal to 20, sorry, greater than 20%, we want to flag that for an approval. So with that um, set, all we're going to do now is log in as one of these originators, one of these users. So I'm logged in as CRM1, and now I'm going to create a sales quotation that contains a discount of 20%. I'm going to pick an item, Let's just say uh, any item here. Okay, and as you can see, if I scroll to the discount percent column, or sorry, discount percent field here at the footer, I'm gonna put in, let's say a pretty high discount, let's just say 30%. And now if I click on add, it's gonna invoke this, pop, this prompt that says, generating this discount, uh, this document requires the authorization of other users. So the approval template, as you recall, is called illegal discount. So I'm gonna send a remark to my manager. Please approve this quote. And we say, okay. So what's gonna happen now is the system is actually going to send this to the manager for an approval. So in the manager's inbox, he's gonna get a request to, re to approve this quotation. So now let's go log in as the manager and check out his inbox. And we're just gonna give it a moment because um, it updates every one minute, okay? Give it a moment, and it should come any second here. And there it is. So you can see, because I define my system to alert me every one minute, it's going to show within a minute. So I have this request for approving document generation. I highlight it. I can see the remark from my salesperson says, please approve this quote. And I can also drill into the quote. You can see it's actually a draft. It's draft number 27. So let's drill into that draft. Okay. And I can see the details. I can see it was requested by user CRM1. The document's a quotation. The current status right now is pending. And I can even drill into the quote itself. So I can see, okay, well, this particular user is giving a 30% discount on this item, but I wanna check out my gross profit calculator. And I can see, you know, there's a gross profit percentage of 72%. That's not bad. So I still feel like it's kind of high. So I'm gonna actually reject it. And I'm gonna say, you can only offer a 15% discount. So in this case, I have a couple of options for my decision. I can say approved or not approved. So I'm gonna reject it. I'm gonna say no. Please decrease discount to Let's say, what did we say? Let's say 15%, all right? And what's gonna happen is now in, this, in that user, CRM user's inbox, he's gonna get a message in his inbox saying that document has been rejected. One thing I also wanna point out though, is there's also some reports here. So I have something called an approval status report. And if I open that, I can actually run a report based on different document statuses. So I can say, show me all my documents with these particular statuses. 
I can pick a specific user that I want to run it against. If I leave it blank, it's going to run it against all users. And I also want to run it for specific documents. So show me all the documents that are in the approval process for quotations and sales orders. And if I say OK, I can see I've got currently three documents. And here's the last one we did. This one is in draft mode because it hasn't been approved yet. Okay. And I can see the status here is that it's been rejected. I also have another report here. This one is called the approval decision report. So there's three decisions. There's no decision yet. There's approved. There's not approved. And again, I can filter by a specific user. I can filter by a specific authorizer or even by template and even by date range. If I run it, you'll see some rows are in red, right? And some are in black. Um, the ones that are in red are the ones that have been rejected or not approved, okay? So let's go log back in as the sales user and let's check out their inbox. And sure enough, there's a message in his inbox here. It says operation and approval process has been rejected. Here's the comment I made. Please decrease discount to 15%. So now, because remember it's in draft mode at the top left here, it's still amendable. So I can change it from 30 to 15%. And now I can add it. And now it's no longer in draft mode, as you can see at the top left, it's actually committed to the system. It's a real sales quotation, okay? So that's an example of how we can use an approval procedure to catch information, to make sure that documents aren't being processed that shouldn't be processed, in this case, where there's an illegal discount. So that was an example of a system-defined approval procedure. But what if I want to create my own approval procedure based on my own criteria? How do I do that? So let's go back to administration. We're going to go to approval stages here. And again, we're going to go into fine mode. And here's an approval stage that I created here. So the scenario is if a customer has an existing or outstanding balance of 100,000 or more, any sales order or quotation has to go into approvals. And so again, we have our sales manager who's going to be the approver. And now we're going to go into our approval template. So again, Let's find our template. We have one called BP balance greater than 100,000. In this case, I'm just gonna make it active now. Here are all the users that are subject to this approval. The documents I want uh, to look at are quotations and sales orders. The stage, again, that's the stage we just created. We're gonna relate it to this approval template. And now the term, at the bottom of the screen, you see something called terms based on user queries. So I actually wrote a query. Let's take a look. Let's just take a back step here and look at that query that I wrote. It's a very simple query. So all this query says is if a customer has a balance of 100,000 or more, and if that, if it's true, then um, I basically I want to identify that um, that customer if it's or that order if it's true. I want to stop that order from going through if it meets that criteria on the query, right? So it's looking for any customer with a balance of a hundred thousand or more. And now all we're going to do is apply that query. All I got to do is double click in here, go into the query manager and select that query and we're going to apply that 
to this approval template. So now I've just applied a custom query that I wrote to this approval procedure. So let's go back and log in as the salesperson. And all we're gonna do here is create um, an order for any item, but we're gonna pick a customer that has a balance of 100,000 or more. So here's a customer. You can see I actually have a four minute search that returns his balance in here. You could also drill into the customer code and look at their balance directly from the business partner. So in this case, this customer has a really big balance. They've got over $4 million outstanding. So that's not good. So we actually want this to go into an approval procedure. So we'll just pick any item here. I can actually go into a recommendations for this customer. I can add, let's say this item here. Okay. And what's gonna happen is if I click on add, it's gonna invoke this request for document approval. So here's their approval template, BP balance greater than 100,000K. And I'm gonna say, please approve. He's my brother. Say okay. So again, that's gonna go back to the sales manager in a minute or so. But the idea behind that is, now you have the ability to actually customize your own approval procedures, right? So you can create any query you want on how to, on how, on any criteria, and that's just going to basically invoke the the approval procedure. Now we do have other webinars on using the query generator. Um, if you want, take a look on our website and look up the, some of our past videos on how to create some of these queries. Um, what you can do is actually, if you go on to our website here www.projectline.ca and you go under support and then webinars, you can actually see a whole bunch of videos that we've done in the past. So here's one called using SAP Business One Query Generator in case you're, you're curious about how to write your own queries. We have some very great tools. So let's go back and log in as our manager. And sure enough, we have another request here for a document uh, approval. We see the comment, please approve. He's my brother. We can drill into it. And we can say, fine, approve, and we'll put a little comment. Approve this one time. Okay. All right, so that's an example of using uh, an approval procedure based on a custom query. Now, one thing you may have noticed is these approvals, um, for example, the first one where we did um, an approval at the document header level. So let's go back to this one here where, uh, oh, sorry, it was a quotation. go back to the last quotation. So this last approval procedure looked at the discount at the document level. In other words, at the header level or the footer level. But what about discounts that are applied at the row level? So one thing you should be aware of is the SAP Business One approval procedures at the moment only validate information at the header level does not yet have, um, uh, does not yet look at the information at the matrix or the grid level. So anything that's on the row level, it doesn't go into a document approval procedure yet. They might do so in the future, but not right now. So one way to get around that is to, you could actually create, if you are uh, savvy with SQL, you're a SQL expert, you could create something called a store procedure or a transaction notification and write a transaction notification or store, sorry, a store procedure that basically stops this quotation if, and looks at different uh, the different criteria on the, at the role level 
and you can actually have a red error bar and that could that could stop the document from being added for example if there is an illegal discount or another option is if you will you have the b1 up add-on from boyum which is a wonderful add-on by the way you could create something called a line loop now a line loop is basically um a feature that looks at every single line it basically loops through every single line in a document and it looks for specific rules and it validates specific lines and it checks to see if certain criteria are met for example is there a discount a legal discount is there information missing on a row do i want to calculate uh or sum all the rows it can do all of those things so let's just go through some really quick examples so again Today's purpose is not to show you how to create line loops, but line loops can create those pop-up messages. It can create error messages. It could actually validate information um, at the row level. And if you want to learn more about using line loops, again, go to our Project Line website and check out our video here on line loops. There's actually tons of videos on here that we've done on features and functions with SAP Business One. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into, let's say, a sales order. Um, or maybe even uh, a quotation. And the scenario is this. Uh, I want to create um, a validation if there is a row discount that's greater than or equal to 25%. Okay? So what we're going to do is open up a sales order. And I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna turn on that little line loop feature It's called line loop prompt if discount is greater than or equal to 25%. Okay, so let's go ahead and create sales order. We can pick any item here. Okay. So let's say, for example, I put in a discount of 30%. Okay. And I click on add. The system's actually going to send a system message prompting me check discount on row one. You are not authorized to discount 25% or higher. Decrease discount or you're dead. I don't want to die, so I'm going to decrease that discount. But did you actually notice it actually told me which rows? So let's say I had multiple rows. Let's say I had you know, another row on here, and I had a discount of 30% on there as well. And I click on Add. It's actually going to tell me row one, Row two are my offending rows. So this is great. If I have, let's say, a document with 100 rows, it's actually going to tell me which offending rows have illegal discounts. So I can go into these rows and I can change this one to zero, and then I can decrease this one to, say, 10%. And now I can add that. OK? So the benefit here is instead of having to go through an approval procedure, because that's still manual, it's, it has to be reviewed by your manager, they gotta drill into it, maybe they gotta check out the gross profit, they've gotta actually uh, send a message back to you saying to change it, there's still some manual work in there. So what if we could actually automate the entire process where the system validates that information and it forces you to correct the information on the spot? This way, errors don't get missed, right? So another example of that is we have, let's do another, I'm gonna show you another um, line loop that I have here. This one's called check rows without price, okay? So again, I have a row, let's say by accident, this is a big item here, $63,000. I accidentally delete that unit price for whatever reason, 
and I click on update, the system is going to warn you. It's going to say the following rows do not contain a price on row one. Click yes to proceed. Click no to enter a price. Well, I definitely do not want to sell this expensive item here without a unit price. So I'm going to put you know, a price of $54,000 in there. Okay. So again, another great way. Another example of using uh, uh, a line loop validation is we can actually tell the system to insert a row automatically for us. So let's add freight to a sales order row, for example. Okay. So I'm just going to delete this row. So the scenario is, if I'm selling an item that weighs less than 100 kilograms, so you can see this, this item here only weighs not even a pound. So if an item uh, weighs less than 100 kilograms, then we want to add a shipping charge automatically. So if I say update, I get a prompt that says weight is less than 100 kilograms. Do you want to add a freight charge? Well, I can say, sure, yes. Absolutely. So now you can see the system automatically puts a freight charge in the row for me, right? Um, there's another one here, another example of this. Oh, actually, let's do another. So let's say, for example, I add a row. That weighs a lot. This one, this this row is 275 kilograms. So let's let's see what happens here. If I update this, you can see I no longer get that prompt because the system knows that this order is more than 100 kilograms. So it's not going to prompt me for freight. This customer actually qualifies for a free freight, right? So there's no freight charge. Um, one more example, real quick, of how a line loop can help you out here. is what if I want to automate um, a free gift of something? So in this case, if a customer purchases more than $10,000, they get a free gift, right? So let's just, uh, maybe we'll just do any update to this order here. We update the order, executes a line loop, and it says this customer is eligible for a free six pack of beer. This item will be added to the order automatically. And we say OK. So now you can see there's a new row in here for a six pack of beer. So again, this is this is some way, this is one way to use the system to help you automate certain things. It prompts you, it alerts you. You don't have to go through an approval procedure in this case because um, certain discounts can be handled, illegal discounts can be handled at the onset during the creation of the order. So those are some really great benefits here. It's actually creating uh, more efficiency in your company. Um, it's decreasing potential mistakes, decreasing customer returns and credit notes because of uh, incorrect orders that were placed. Okay. All right. So moving along. Um, let's move on to uh, some alerts. Let's talk about that. So as I, I showed you earlier, there were some system-defined alerts in here. So for example, um, a system-defined alert like uh, that one here, the renewal contract, right? Um, or the order recommendation, these are, reports or alerts that come right out of the box informing me in this case that I need to create some purchase orders for some of these items because we're running low on stock, right? So wouldn't it be great if the system actually told you when you should create these purchase orders or even production orders uh, of, uh, for certain items? So some, those are some system alerts. Let's take a look at some other system alerts real quick. So go to administration. And we go into alerts at the very bottom. And I can just do an asterisk here while we're in fine mode. I'm just going to sort by type. And you can see there's um, some system alerts here. And there's some user alerts that I created. 
So you have everything from deviation from gross profit, deviation from budget, deviation from commitment limit, et cetera, et cetera. But what if I want to create my own alerts based on my own specific criteria? Uh, an example of that would be this one right here. AP invoices, number of days before due date. So this alert basically is a nice proactive alert. It notifies me of upcoming vendor invoices that I have to pay. And it tells me the amount of days um, before their due date. You can see here under the alerts management, I set this as a high priority alert. I want the, the finance person notified. And I also want the sales manager notified. I can also specify the frequency of this alert. Maybe I want it every one hour, right? But you could also set it so that it's every day at, say, 8 a.m., okay? And what you would do is you go to this button here. You click Open Saved Query. And all you're going to do is point to that particular uh, query. So for example, I believe I have it under here. AP invoices number of days before due date. OK, so I'm basically assigning that query to this alert. OK. Let's take a look. Um, I actually have it that it's already run here. So let's take a look. I can double click on it. It's gonna tell me the subject. It came from the server and the date and the time <clears throat> that it ran. And within the data tab here, you can actually see it tells me 29 days for the due date, it tells me the due date, the AP invoice number, the vendor code, the vendor name, and the document total. I can even have a snapshot of that here. So anytime I, I highlight it, I get the snapshot over here. Okay. Um, another one that I created was uh, this one here. AR invoices, number of days before due date. So again, this is a great um, alert because the system is automatically telling me which customers uh, are going to be paying their invoices very soon. So it's like a snapshot into my cash flow, right? So I can drill, for example, into one of these AR invoices and look at the details if I wanted to. And I can see, like, I'm expecting, you know, about, what is that, about $150,000 or so coming in in the next uh, month. This one's going to be within two days. And these other invoices, I'm expecting uh, payment within the next 30 days. OK. I also have one here called daily sales report. And this is a nice way of the system doing the work for me. So the system is basically sending me a report daily on, on my sales numbers. So if we take a look at how to create that one, for example, Right. Again, I'm, set, I'm setting up the alert to be sent to the manager. It can be an internal message that appears in SAP, or it can even be an email. I can send an email. Um, and in this case, I want this to be activated every day at 6 AM. OK. And again, I have a query behind that. And if I run it or look at it, it's this one right here, and I can assign it to this particular uh, alert, OK? Um, so that's a really, those are some examples of you know, system-defined as well as user-defined alerts. So the idea behind this is let's be proactive and let's get some proactive uh, alerts in the system, as opposed to us reacting and having to manually create these reports when we need them, right? The system's doing the work for us. It's automatically generating these reports. 
So it's giving us some key information and visibility into our data. All right. So with that being said, that's the end of today's uh, webinar. So I would like to open up the floor to any questions. Thanks, Jeremy. Jeremy, maybe you can unmute. Yep. Yeah, you bet. So again, if you have questions, just type them into that questions panel on the right side of your screen, and we'll we'll read them out and give Jerwin a chance to to answer them for you. I just want to reiterate something that Jerwin touched on a couple times in the session. Our webinars are all available on our website. So, you know, if you ever have questions about Business One, any of the features. Our website is a great place to start because that's every webinar we've ever done. There's also some great how-to articles there. So make sure that you make use of those resources. Thanks again to Jerwin and thanks to everyone for attending.